service is put you before you to self-explanatory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, be with you in the spirit of the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and go with you always. We are summoned by a gracious and merciful God. He calls us into solemn assembly. Remembering the sacrifice made for us, we are called to confess to God our sin and to repent of all that we have done to offend him. We will pray to God for showing us mercy and ask his help in being holy as he is holy. God assists all who call upon him in spirit and in truth. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We will worship the Lord our God and serve only him. The 22nd Psalm is a reflection of what was to come in the crucifixion of our Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry out by faith, but you do not answer, for I am a silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am the one and not a man, scorned by men, and despised by the people. Yet I am the one who is honored by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord trust in him. Let him deliver him. Let him know why it's in him. I can cut all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. You, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you will I fulfill my vows. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. Father in heaven, we come to you this evening. We ask your forgiveness for all of our sins. We ask for your grace to sustain us through these hard times. Be with us and bless us as we continue to celebrate your redemption of us and the cross of Calvary, which means so much to us in our salvation, not only today, but every day and always, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
You may remain seated for the reading of the gospel. The gospel is written by the apostle John. John was the last disciple alive. All the other disciples uh, were, were uh, killed, except for John. Uh, Domitian, the wicked emperor of Rome, at the end of the first century, exiled him to the island of Patmos. And at this particular time, he was still young, in his 30s, a disciple of our Jesus. And the words from John 12 are based upon why the Jewish people, the Sanhedrin, and the people uh, crucified Christ be because of what took place. So this is a very important lesson for us to listen to, to see why uh, part of the crucifixion they thought was necessary. John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from the pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he was about to betray him, said, Why this ointment? Why wasn't it sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of all the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you will always be with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going to going away and believing in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the meditation. Him, Jesus, refuge of the weary.
Grace be unto all of you in peace through God our Father and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lenten season continues. Uh, Lent is such a wonderful time of the year when the Lord became one of us. He was always true God, but he also then became true man. His That's called the ex state of exal humiliation. State of exaltation is when he always was God, and he always used his powers of God, but the New Testament entirety tells us that he sets aside that always being God, so that sometimes he sets aside that and doesn't always use his powers as God because he comes as human beings to us. That's why we celebrate Lent, because God couldn't be killed or murdered or die on a cross. Jesus had to do it in his state of humiliation. When he became man, he always was man. Didn't stop being God, but he just didn't use those attributes as God. Tonight, we're going to learn a little bit more about him. Please be seated. In the name of our Lord and Savior, by the power of the Holy Spirit, dear friends and fellow redeemed. The, uh, the world has no idea in its unbelief, not the entirety of the world, but all those outside of the Christian faith have no idea if they haven't searched into it or let the Holy Spirit dwell on them, the magnificence of the Christian faith. There is no Muslim that believes, unless they're converted to Christianity, that believes that Jesus Christ was crucified. Christians believe Jesus Christ was crucified, and the scripture is quite evident of that. Before his crucifixion, he had gathered himself many friends, uh, not just the disciples and the many ladies that followed after him, but he had a whole covenant of followers surrounding him because he was that type of being who cared about people, who showed people. We could go back to the many stories, the little boy's lunch that fed 5,000 people uh, not including women and children. The story of raising Lazarus from the dead, which we're going to hear about more tonight. I want to just explain something, I don't know why, but when we talk about the grace of God, the grace of God is us getting what we don't deserve. That's grace. Mercy is us not getting what we do deserve. We deserve a lot of punishment, but we don't get it because of the mercy of God. We get a lot of things that we don't deserve. I've always said in my life, how did that happen? And he gives me grace. He gives us grace all the time. Tonight we are familiar with two of the people that Jesus had as very close friends. Jesus wasn't uh, some kind of hermit that lived off in a suburbs or the woods by himself. Uh, no, he had a lot, a lot of friends. If you read the New Testament, at least slowly, you will see that. Uh, the particular circumstance of Lazarus, who many believe was his best friend, even though he was a very, very good friend. We don't know that he's his best friend. But upon the circumstance of Lazarus dying, that is why the, the last step of Christ going out of Bethany to Jerusalem led to his crucifixion. So tonight we're going to hear uh, from two people that were very close friends. They happened to be the sisters of Lazarus. I think they're here tonight. There's one. Ladies, would you please come forward? looks like you're coddling her. That's called love. Yeah, she always does that. Make sure things, including me, are always so proper. <laughs> well, that's awful kind of you. I'm sure you're both that way. That's fine. Could you please tell us your names? My name is Martha, and this is my sister, Mary. Hello, Martha. Hello, Mary. I'm glad you're here tonight. 
You're more than welcome, I'm sure. Well, I, I, I do appreciate it. Um, this, I don't mean to be personal, but this will play a part in what I'm going to ask you tonight. Do you happen to be married? No, no, goodness no. <laughs> okay. Sorry if that was a wrong question well, to ask. At least for me, not, not yet. <laughs> Good for you. And your brother. Your brother was, as I said to the congregation, Lazarus. Is that correct? That's correct. That's why I ask you here tonight, because at, we're only into the second week of Lent, and that's so important to know uh, his story. Could you tell us about that a little bit? Would you do that, please? Absolutely. Oh, where do you want us to start? Well, let me, let me, I'll give you a basis off to, which to jump from. Let me ask you a couple of questions. First, so that we get a, a background and understanding of that. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Where do you live? A little village called Bethany. It was just outside of Jerusalem, about two miles away. In fact, it was very near the Mount of Olives. That, as I hope we all remember, the Mount of Olives, that's where uh, Jesus was uh, arrested uh, on a Thursday night before at Gethsemane, is that correct? Yes, that's what we understand. It was there that he was arrested. All right, going back to your dear brother uh, for a moment, where was he arrested? Well, it was the week before Passover, and um, it's what you call Holy Week. Yes, so soon we, we will be observing Holy Week. Lazarus died just before that time. What, what happened? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, Lazarus and Jesus were really good friends. In fact, all of us were very, very good friends with Jesus. He would often come by our home uh, during his travels. It was not unusual for him to spend the night. Yes, I, I think he, well, I know he liked to come to our house just to relax, and we liked that too. Yeah. So if I could interrupt you a second, that's, you had a really unique relationship with him. And from my perspective as a follower of Jesus Christ, I find that very comforting because being God in humanity, being God in the flesh, I'm sure... It satisfied him to have close friends like you and your brother. So I think that's really neat. So what happened? Well, Lazarus got sick. He was very sick. And he died. It happened so quickly. Yes, it was so fast. And we sent some of our friends to let Jesus know that Lazarus had died. Uh, let me interrupt you. Were you hoping that Jesus would come back and raise Lazarus from the dead? Oh, oh goodness, goodness, no. No. Uh, we just wanted him to know because we were such good friends. We knew that he would want to come and be with us. And that's what's so puzzling. What, uh, not, not that I questioned you, what's so puzzling about that? Well, we sent some friends to tell Jesus, and it, as it turns out, he was just two days away when he got word that Lazarus had died he stayed where he was another two days. At the time, we couldn't figure it out. We knew he cared more than that, but why did he delay? Did you ever wish that Jesus had done something for you? You asked him for something, and he seemed to delay in answering? Believe me, there's a reason why he delays. Just wait. Be patient. Believe me. No, believe us. Yes, believe us. Well, I agree with you, but why do you say that? Um, I see it many times throughout the scripture. For instance, one of the times when he said, after he feeds the 5,000, in fact, he sends the people away and he instructs the disciples to get out of sea. And they get out of the sea of Galilee, and we end up finding out that when he arrives on the other side, the people are all gathered around because they want more of him. But they went out at 9 o'clock in the evening, and Jesus didn't come to get them until 4 o'clock in the morning. So and let me just say something to the congregation. that That's so true. Jesus delays for a purpose. When we say, where are you, Lord? 
where are you? He's doing that for a reason, not only for his sake, in this particular case, to show the glory of God the Father, but also for your sake. And you have to believe that. Proverbs 3 says, lead that unto thine own understanding. Don't try to figure it out, but trust in the Lord. It's the bottom line of humanity. Christianity, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Don't rely upon your own mind. Let me, let me interrupt myself now. Uh, do you agree with what I said, having experienced what you guys went through? Yes, absolutely. Well, you were... You were pretty direct with Jesus, according to what we read in Scripture. Is that correct? Yes, very direct. So when he got to our house, and it had been four days since we buried Lazarus, I ran out to meet Jesus, and when I heard he was near, I said, Lord, Lord, if only you had been here, your friend, my brother, would still be alive. I... I wasn't mean, I was just being honest as friends can be with each other, right? Yeah, I taught my children when they were growing up that you never have to explain to friends. And enemies, enemies won't believe you anyway. And I think that's really true. Uh, it's called veracity, truthfulness. We are to be truthful, especially as Christians. That's a, a big attribute, a divine attribute. So anyway, keep, keep going, will you please, Martha? Well, then Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And I said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection. I, we believe in the resurrection. I say that because not everybody did, like the Sadducees. But the master, Jesus, had told us about it, that we would all rise again. Let me put a small bit of humor, at least in my mind. You said there were Sadducees. Those are the ones that didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. That's why they're called sad, you see. <laughs> All right. Uh, what did he say when you said, I know my brother will rise again? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, shall live again. And I said, yes, Lord. I know you are the Christ. And then I ran back to my home to tell Mary that he had come. That's why it's so important for us at the end of the creeds to say I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I am going to see the Lord again. Paul says I long to depart to be with Christ which is far better. Let me ask you, uh, what happened then, Mary? Well, Martha came rushing in and she said, Jesus, Jesus is at the city gate. So I jumped up to see him and boy, well, there were a lot of people in our house and a lot of them jumped up and ran with us. Well, what happened then? Well, I don't know that anybody expected anything to really happen, um, but I, I fell at Jesus' feet and I said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Did you ask him where he was, where your brother was? Well, when our friends saw me crying and then they were crying, and when Jesus saw me and saw us, he just looked so sad, so very sad. He started crying. And I had never, I don't suppose anybody had ever seen him, the master, cry before. That just showed how much he loved my brother. Mary, can I interrupt you, Martha? I mean, to interrupt you either. That's an amazing passage in scripture. That shows us humiliation. You can't picture God the Father crying. I don't think you can. But in this case, he identifies with us. When you are frustrated with life, which I'm sure we all are right now, uh, go home and sit in a quiet place even if it's by yourself and ask Jesus to come and sit on your bed with you and as you cry under whatever circumstances he does cry with us 
he feels in his humanity just what we feel. That's why he suffered so much even on the cross. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable, but he identifies with you. Y you are important to Christ. You are. Martha, go ahead now. You, uh, well, I just wanted to reiterate how much Jesus loves us, but that's another story. Go on, Mary. Well, he looked so very sad, and I don't, I don't think, I know I had never seen him look that way before. Then he said, where have you laid him? And, and then, well, everyone was crying. All the people, our friends with me, and then he, and then Jesus started crying. Well, we took Jesus to where we had buried Lazarus. It was a tomb, and when we got there, Jesus said to some of the men with us, take away the stone. And I thought, what is he talking about? Our brother has been dead for four days already. For sure there would be decay, and I reminded them of that. But then he said, don't you want to see the glory of God? And so then he rolled away the stone. And then, then he yelled, he yelled, Lazarus, come out, Lazarus, come out. And then he did. He still had on the grave clothes that we had wrapped him in, and Jesus told us to take them off. <laughs> we did, and he looked at us with a smile. He was fine. He was alive. And then he ran up to the master, to Jesus, and he hugged him, and everyone cried again, but this time, tears of joy, real joy. But then... And then, what? well, news of Jesus raising Lazarus spread quickly. Like I said earlier, we didn't live very far from Jerusalem, and the chief priest and the rulers heard about Lazarus. And so then they really plotted from that day on to mm. have Jesus arrested. And if... What? Why, why are you pausing? Well, if they could even have him executed. It was the high priest Caiaphas. From that day on, Jesus had to be careful. Everywhere they went, they looked for him. And that's what happened. Caiaphas had his way. They even plotted to kill our brother because he rose from the dead. Many, many people came to believe in our master as the promised Messiah of Israel. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that was what we would call empirical evidence that, that Jesus had at least to them, some power. We know that he has the power of all, the, all things. What, could you tell us a little bit about that, what happened? Well, it was one of Jesus' own disciples who really did it, Judas. He was in charge of the money, and he was a crook. No good. Absolutely no good. Why do you say that, just to give us an example? Well, just before the Passover, not quite a week earlier, we had... A dinner in honor of Jesus for raising Lazarus and I had saved this perfume for a long time it was very expensive very very expensive oh Martha <laughs> Jesus was worth it anyway I poured some of it on Jesus's feet and Judas yelled at me he actually yelled at me and then said to Jesus stop her we could use that perfume and give the money to the poor yeah right Judas you crook you just want to keep the money for yourself now now Mary that's all in the past yes kids what, uh, what happened next? Could you tell me? Or well, else? Jesus had been talking about going to Jerusalem and that he was going to have to suffer there. We really didn't want him to go. No, we knew that they were plotting against him, but he insisted. So it was on a Sunday, right after the Sabbath, that he had his disciples go and get a colt, a little donkey, and they went to Jerusalem from our village, Bethany. And there was such a commotion I'm going to ask you about what do you mean by such a commotion? Well, as soon as we started the two-mile trip, people started following him, running from their homes, from everywhere. And by the time they, I mean we, because we went along too, arrived, there was a whole crowd of people. I, I wish it wouldn't have happened. Oh, Martha, it was exciting. It was fun. The people all started yelling, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Yeah, it was wonderful, but it attracted so much attention to Jesus that it wasn't hard for them to, I mean the chief priests and elders, to know that Jesus was in town. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's when they plotted to 
to find a good time to arrest him, and that's what they did. It was so fast, so quick, so wrong. It was on a Friday, the day before the Saturday Sabbath, they had the trial. And there was another crowd, a different crowd. It wasn't us, we who followed him into Jerusalem, but another crowd, plants, confederate from Caiaphas. That was where they were from. They yelled, crucify him, crucify Jesus. And that's what they did. Uh, let me interrupt a second. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times people, and even the clergy, get things uh, jumbled up there. They think that this crowd that followed Jesus saying Hosanna on Palm Sunday turned so quickly. And sometimes the clergy will warn us not to turn so quickly. But of course, we, we shouldn't. But these were two different crowds. These were crowds that followed Jesus, and these were the crowds that wanted him dead. So anyway, what, what happened then? Where were you during all this? Well, we were both there, and it was just so sad, terribly sad, until... To what? Well, with some people, the soldiers and others, um, under the cross, they were mocking him, saying, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross, come down from the cross. They were yelling it, and we knew... I, I mean, I, I don't understand. Seriously, what do you mean you do what? Well, remember we told you when he raised Lazarus, he stood outside the tomb and yelled, Lazarus, come out, come out. And when these people yelled, come down, come down, we knew that Jesus had the power to do just that, that he could have come down just like that if he wanted to. But, but he didn't want to. He knew what he was doing and that what he was doing was for us, for us, and, and for you, Pastor, and for you. <laughs> and if he had the power to raise our brother to life, we knew he had the power to raise himself back to life. And if he had the power to do that, which he did, he has the power to do anything in your life. Trust him. Believe in him. Love him. We were there. Thank you, Mary Mother, very much for your eyewitness testimony. Very, very much. Thank you, and Yeshers would please take the offering. Please rise for prayer. We continue on the bottom of page four with the evening suffrages. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. We 
pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers. Blessed be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven. The Almighty and merciful Lord bless and preserve us. Amen. Vouchsafe, O Lord, this night. To keep us without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. And our child to me. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And let my child come unto thee. The Lord be with your spirit. And with thy spirit. We pray Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father. Through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this day. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all my sins. Let your angel deliver me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Bless we the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the blessings of God the Holy Spirit go with you always. Amen.
Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight, taking this time out during the holy season of Lent, which it indeed is. Thank you, Mary and Martha. Can we clap a little bit for that? Uh, I'm, I'm not wearing my robe because it's a little bit long and difficult for me to walk in it as much so. Uh, I hope you're not offended by me not wearing a robe. I told Jeannie today I wasn't going to wear my robe, and it also gets very hot under those things. But I told her, uh, but I would like them to dress in antiquity the way Mary and Martha would have dressed. And I suggested that they watch the movie The Robe before they came tonight to, to look what apparel they should wear. You look great, though, ladies. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to continue with another character next week, so I hope you're, you're here. Uh, are there any guests that want to be introduced or want to introduce yourself? You all did look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that next week. I, I want to say something from the heart about what we're all experiencing, watching what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, we hurt. We hurt very badly because of it. I've done a lot of reading on Ukraine and going back into some history of it. But right now, the, just the term Christianity, there's 95% Christians over there. Russian Orthodox, be that as it may, and the Roman Catholic Church, Protestantism, but mostly among that, Lutheranism. But it's just so sad. It, it hurts us, but it hurts us to the point that we really ought to keep these folks in our prayer because I don't think anybody right now has the answer. Uh, Putin is not crazy. He's evil. He's an evil man. And what he tries to conduct is very evil. And the way we go against evil is not by our own power. We need to go by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. So your prayers matter. Your prayers matter very, very much, and uh, it, it just does. It's, it's, it's so sad, but we can change it around. Of course we can. So please keep the people of Ukraine, the people of Poland, uh, Romania, and Estonia, and all of those countries in your prayers, because we don't know what's going to happen, but we do know that the best is yet to come. As I say at funeral services, the book of Romans chapter, uh, book of Revelation chapter 21, the day is going to come where there is no more pain, no more crying, no more of any of that. But until that, we need to bear with it, not only ourselves, but with the other people. Uh, we need to be what Abraham Lincoln said, the only Bible that some people get to read. So stand up for your Christian faith and keep them in your prayer. I'm going to exit down the stairs, but I'm going to come out there and and greet you. So give me a second. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 